<laughs> okay. So it says, let's find the domain of these, these functions here. So we started out doing 9 and 10. And so we are here. And so we have this, what we call a rational function. Why do we call this a rational function? Because the variable is in the denominator. denominator. Very good. Good job. And so how do we find the domain of this, of this function? I think we should find our, the what is excluded, like what x cannot be. Okay, so uh, there's, a, there's a way in business thing called management by exception. And I think, Nicole, you're kind of talking about that, right? Sure. She's talking about that you try to find what is excluded from the possibilities of the domain, and then what is the domain? It's everything except what is excluded. Okay. So how in this express in this function are we going to find exclusions to the domain? What would what would preclude or exclude a value from existing in a function? What x like you said those equal to zero? Those? What are those? The domain. <laughs> Are you 12? <laughs> <laughs> you just popped in your head. I'm just kidding. Can't help it. I'm just kidding. So what, what do we have to set? What is the equation we have to do to set? Or what? X plus 3 equals zero. equals zero. X minus 1 equals zero. So let's find our exclusions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put, we, we know that we can't divide by zero. So if we go ahead and say, x plus 3, we know an x minus 1 cannot equal 0, so therefore x cannot equal positive 3 or negative 1. No. x cannot equal negative 3 or 1. So these are our excluded values. So our domain is everything except Negative. These things. Infinity. So how do? Okay, so so Nicole has already given us the answer. So you say negative infinity, comma, comma negative three, negative three, comma one. No, there's still negative two to zero. We gotta get in there somehow. Okay. And then so next we have what? Negative two, zero. I thought it can't be negative three. Oh, I got you. I got you. And, and one positive oh. And I don't know how you how you think of if you've thought of this before, but I look at it kind of this way. If you have like a a big a piece of rope, how many how many cuts do I have to make in a rope to make three pieces out of one rope? Two. Two cuts. So you actually have two cuts in this domain, and so this will be your answer. I have the biggest headache, you know, but if so, I go to the nurse, they're going to say, I don't want to be here. I went to go get a ball last night. I dove and hit the ground, hit my hip, my elbow, and my head. Well, okay. Crap sucks. Don't miss it. Look at, look at that, the bruise on my elbow. So, Chloe, is that what makes you tired today? Oh, yeah, it looks this bad. <laughs> All right. Do so you have any, any questions about this? <laughs> Justin, do you have any questions about this? Are you good with this? <laughs> okay, let's talk about what this is. Uh -huh. Okay. This is called what? Union. Union. And interval notation, what we use is parentheses and brackets. So you're going to get used, used to it. We'll talk about that today. So, so this piece here, you have three separate intervals. And so we're talking about this piece of the function from neg greater than negative infinity to less than negative 3, and this piece between negative 3 and 1, and then greater than 1. Other than that, the domain otherwise would be all real numbers. 
What about the numerator? Does the numerator here have anything to do with domain restrictions? No, it doesn't. Why not? Because it's a numerator. As numerator, and what kind of function is that numerator? A rational. A rational. It's a polynomial function. <laughs> and, what is the, and what is the domain of, of polynomial functions? All, All real numbers. numbers. All real numbers. So we have no exclusions here in the numerator. Okay, let's go on here. Now this one here, how would you... You know something, uh, Elizabeth asked the question, uh, can you combine the ones? Yeah, you actually could. You don't got like, to though, right? If we could make our common denominator, it's going to be x times x minus 3, and we could actually do that, but do we need to do that? No. No, we don't. But when we go ahead and add these fractions together, that's how we would do it, find our common denominator. And we could from that, but when we have these things sitting right here, there, there's really no need for it, okay? So let's go ahead, how do we set this one up to find our excluded values? Thank you, that was very good. X minus three cannot be equal to zero. So we set this one denominator not equal to zero, so X cannot equal three, right? What else? Anything else? X cannot equal zero. Yeah, so also, X cannot equal zero. So is that, is that the entirety of our excluded values on this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's go ahead and write our, write our domain. So it's going to be similar to problem 11, isn't it? One thing people can get in trouble with in these things is properly going from left to right. I think I did it. You did it? I think so. Okay. I think it's a trip you. you start with like this, like this? Is that how you started? Uh-huh. And then you went to? Zero. Zero. And then you went to this. Then you went to zero. And then you went to? Three. Three, then you went to here, then you went to three, then you went to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me see if that's showing up. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. I went off the screen. Yeah. You missed it. I went off the screen a little bit last class. All right. Questions on this one? No. Okay, next. Oh, <laughs> this one here. What are we going to do with this guy? Oh. Uh, can we factor it? Oh, yeah, can we factor it? Let's let's go let's go write down the write it down first, right? Okay. I like you guys mentioning factoring because that's really good. I heard both of you. Gosh, that's good. Good that you think to do that because a lot of people don't do that. So how would we factor this thing out here? Um, you would put two x. Two sets of parentheses and x in each one. So we know x is a common factor here, right? Uh -huh. So we write if we write x and what goes inside here. Uh -huh. What times x equals x squared? Minus five. Minus five. Now you did a good thing here because a lot of times what people will do is they'll just go ahead and add five like this. Okay, so you had the good instincts to just try to factor from there. And so what do we know about our, our excluded values? Five. And also x cannot equal zero. zero. So now we can just write out our domain, right? Let's put a little D colon. You explained this really well, so I get this part. Okay, good. And so we have the same thing as, as 11 and 12, really, right? 
negative infinity, zero, five, union five. So that would be our domain. Okay. Hey, little football records. Little trainer. But you know one thing about football practice? Yeah, indoors that's better, but but cool off a little outside. Well, okay. not necessarily better because yesterday's gym was so hot. Really? No, it was Canton. Canton's always oh, Canton. super hot. Okay, okay. All right. So now we have this guy right here. Four. Uh, how do we find our excluded values for this one here, problem 14? So one excluded value, we know that x, x cannot equal 3, right? So we know that. Okay, that's a good call. What about this thing up here? We don't have to worry about it. Is this a polynomial function no, up here, though? It's not. No, it's not. So it's a radical here. So what do we have to know? Um, well, we know. So we know that that this thing. What can this not be here? Chloe was telling us yesterday. What can this not be? Negative. Cannot be negative. Not be negative. Chloe, you said that yesterday. I did. I think you did. I know you're tired today. So we have, we know this has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Mm -hmm. And how would we how do we do that? Let's see. How could we solve that? Um, Any ideas? Uh, square. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I would add x squared to both sides. So if we do that, we get four is greater than or equal to x squared. And then take the square. And then if we take the square, what if you don't mind, let me go ahead and rewrite this. I'm gonna write this as x squared is less than or equal to four. Alright? So now we've done that. And now if we take the square root of both sides of this thing, we have X is, X is less than or equal to. So we have X is greater, less than or equal to, what is this going to be? Two. What else besides two? Oh, plus or negative two. Positive. Plus or minus yeah, two. Yeah, plus or minus two. Plus or minus two, okay, good. And it, it's really hard to, what this does is when you have a plus or minus two like this, less than or equal to, what it is, you gotta consider two things. It's x is less than or equal to two, but you have to consider the negative two. And x is going to be what? Less than or equal to negative two. Less than or equal to negative two? What now we have this negative sign here, so what does that do? It flips this on. Changes the direction here. Hmm. Okay, so we have we have two of these. And I'm going to try to explain this another way too, is if we have this function over here, uh, remember we have this function right here? <coughs> I'm going I'm to work it up here. <clears throat> Chloe was working out some algebra for us. We started, um, she started out as x squared, or we left it here, x squared is less than or equal to 4, right? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and subtract that 4 from both sides, right? So we have x squared minus 4 is less than or equal to 0, right? So the value of this function is going to exist where if we consider this as a function as y 
equals x squared minus 4, wherever this function is less than or equal to 0, that's where our solutions are. Now, can we graph this function y equals x squared minus 4? Yeah, we can. What does that look like? Where's our y-intercept? Negative 4. Negative 4, right? So at negative 4, where are the, where are the x-intercepts? We're going to be at negative 2 and 2. And what does that graph of that function look like? It's like, it's like a u. Looks like this, right? Mm -hmm. So where is this function less than 0 between and equal to negative 2 and 2? So sometimes just working it out graphically like this can help us figure out what's going on. So what is our, what is our domain of this function? Okay. That's it. That is our domain. Because everything less than negative two is not does isn't included, right? Everything greater than two is not included, so this will be our domain. All right. Let me make sure. You see that? Yeah, it's can. It's kind of close to see it. So I'm going to just try to move it just a little bit higher. See if I can do it. There we go, just a little higher. Okay. You should get the teacher's aid that just cameras for you. The teacher's aid? Mm-hmm. And all they do is do your camera for you. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Get a camera op. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's something. There. Okay. What do we do for the exclusions on this guy, number 15? I don't know. Well, we got to do 4 minus part, part, What would you say, Elizabeth? Can you factor x squared plus 1? Yeah, it would just be x plus 1 three times. Okay, well, let's consider x squared plus 1, right? How do we factor x squared plus 1? Okay, guys, when you have x squared plus something, that is not factorable. There is no equal something. There is no solution here. So there's not, there's not any number that x cannot be. Okay. This is always going to be not equal to. So there are going to be no exclusions based on this at all. Because this is always going to be at least what? 1. No matter if x is negative or positive. So we don't have to worry about this guy at all. Now what do we have to worry about? The, it's all, yeah, it's not a polynomial. Not a polynomial function. What else do we have to worry about? This guy right here, right? So x cannot equal what? One. X cannot equal negative 1. We know that. And also we know that 4 minus x has to be what? Greater than or equal to? Zero. Zero. And then to solve for this, if we If we add x. add x, we have 4 is greater than or equal to x. And so x is less than or equal to 4. So, how, and so we know that x is less than or equal to 4, but x cannot equal negative 1. So what is that going to look like? I will show you. So we have 4 here, right? And we have negative 1. So what, is, what does less than or equal to 
four look like? Close circle. But what happens at negative one? There's a break. There's a break, right? So there's a break right here. And so what is our domain for this guy? Negative infinity. Negative infinity up till negative one. Negative one. And then one to four. And then uh, one. Oops, it's negative one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Negative one to four. Bracket or parentheses? Bracket. Bracket. Because we can include it, so that it therefore it's a bracket. All right. Four positive. No, it can't go over four. Yeah, we, are, we have ex we can't have bigger than four. So this is going to be our entire domain. All right. Okay, it's again, it's what Nicole was talking about earlier. It's find your excluded values. And now we have this thing here. Does that look like kind of a monster? It's not fun. Yeah, it looks kind of a monster. But do we do the same principles before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we say x to the fourth power minus 16x squared is greater than or equal to? Zero. Zero. And what is going to be a common factor here? X squared. So x squared mm. times x squared, x squared minus 16. 16 is greater than or equal to 0. And so can we factor this further? Yes, we can. How do we factor this thing further here? Um, x plus and minus 4. So, we want to find out, now we got to find out where these are greater than or equal to 0. And uh, you can do different things. You can have, do a, we call a sign chart. And the way that looks is this. You put, what are the, what are the values? of x here. x can, uh, equal. can equal 0. Mm -hmm. Actually it can. And x cannot equal uh, negative 4. x cannot equal positive 4. So we just put these on number line here. We've got negative 4, 0, and 4. And then we just test the intervals right here. So you pick a number to the left of that negative 4 if we take a number, what's going to a number less than negative four? Negative six. Negative six. So if we use negative six, this one here is still going to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. If we take negative six, that's negative, and then this one is negative. So what's a positive times a negative times a negative? Positive. So we know we're positive less than negative four. What about between negative 4 and 0? What's the number between negative 4 and 0? Negative 2. So negative 2, and that's still going to be positive. And this one here for negative 2, that's going to be positive. But this one's going to be negative, right? Negative. So we have a negative here. And, and we have, uh, what's this one going to be here? Well, this is still going to be positive. I mean, if we put 1 or something like that, that would be a, a positive, positive, negative. So that's still going to be negative here. What about greater than 4? Well, we're going to have positive, positive, positive. So uh, we are looking for greater than, right? So where do we see greater than here? Less than negative 4 and greater than or equal to 4. So our domain is going to be a negative infinity comma negative 4 and then what else? Uh, Union negative 4 to 4 4 comma see we're less than 0 if we, oh, oh. See, if we graph this thing out this is what we would see we would see this 
Okay, so that's what we would see. Okay, that's our domain for that. Now, the last four on these are find the range of the function and for the range of the function they're harder to do analytically like we did unless you know the function um, you should be able to know some of these functions but for a lot of these you'll use a calculator and look at them so I want you to get out your calculator if you have one so this one here f of x equals 10 minus x squared what does that look like What does this function look like? What does it look like? The x-intercept is 10. The y-intercept is y, 10. That's what I mean. And then so we have something that looks like this. So what is our range of this function? 10, negative Okay, negative infinity, 10. Then, this one right here, what's going to be our range of this function? What you're going to have is this one right here is going to look like something like, and I'm kind of, we're sort of running sort of low on time. So I'm going kind of fast now. So what you have is this thing right here, which is 4 minus x. And what that is, is, and if you, if you graph this in your calculator, you would see this thing right here. But what does this 5 do? Makes it go higher. Makes it go higher by 5, right? So this right here, is going to be the point 4 comma 5. So what is our range of this guy going to be here? Where do we start out? 5. 5. Infinity. So we have 5 comma infinity. That's going to be our range for this guy right here. And then for 19 I want you, there are ways to do this one. I want you just to look in a calculator, put this in your calculator, and just kind of see what it looks like. So we got x squared over 1 minus x squared. So I'm going here. We get x squared over 1 minus x squared. And so we put this in here. And I, I know there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at negative 1. So negative 1 is going to be a break in the domain, I think. Let's graph this to be sure. Do you see the break in negative 1? And so what is going to be our range of this function? OK, we start from down here, negative, negative infinity all the way to negative 1, but not including negative 1, and then 0 to infinity. Let's see if 0 is defined. Yeah, 0 is defined, so that's good. So we have our, our range is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, union, and what goes here? Zero. To infinity. Okay? And the last one, 20, I want you to put that in your calculator. So 3 plus x squared over 4 minus x squared. So 3 plus x squared. Oops. over 4 minus x squared. Is that it? Mm -hmm. OK.
Okay, graph. Now, let me see. I still think we have the same horizontal asymptote of negative 1. So negative 1 is still the deal here, right? We have negative infinity to uh, negative 1 not included. And what goes here? Zero. Or 1. Not 0. Let's see what it is. Go to table view. 3 fourths. Oh. Right? So our 3 fourths are 0.75. And so that includes here. So we get 3 fourths, comma, infinity. Now we kind of rushed through the last part here, just sort of in the interest of time. But that's all these exercises we're going to go over today. Any questions on these? Those last two are really kind of hard to do without a calculator, I think.